Hi everyone, my name is Adox, and thank you all for coming to my channel. So today we have the second episode of Craycross Epic with Chapter 1, Episode 2, Raylena and Chaos. So with that out of the way, let us jump straight into the story. The Byroid, Youth Roa, and the drag ridden girl Raylena had escaped to a stone temple surrounding the World Tree. It was the only place to escape to, with, with body from which a decaying arm had been torn off. It was hard for him to keep his balance, and his legs felt like they were going to give way. Somehow he managed to hold it together, running up the stairs and through the long corridor, when he heard a voice, a shrinking as a whip ahead of him. This way! In desperation, he turned the other way. But from that same direction, he could hear the sound of multiple footsteps stamping against the stone floor. They were trapped. As he desperately searched for a place to escape, Rolwa's eyes fell upon a door slightly ajar through which a faint light was leaking. He immediately clenched his stomach. Come! shouted Rolwa, grabbing Raylina's arm. She instantly understood his intentions, and the both of them dashed into the room together. The room was so dimly lit, with only a single small light, that they were unable to even tell how big it was. The duo and the small dragon held their breath in the dimness, as they tightly pressed their bodies against the door. They could hear the sound of the guards running through the corridor beyond the door. Eventually, the sound of the footsteps faded away, and the only sound was their breathing. They're gone, right? It was Angelina who said that. Yeah, probably. It was Roa who answered. I think you should wait a little longer. It was man bis beknownst to sorry, beknownst to them who whispered. As if they had been played, the two of them turned around and saw women man in dark coloured vestments standing close to them. Snap. The man snapped his fingers and the faint room lightly flared up until it shone brightly. It was only then that the duo realised that the room they had entered was an a luxurious guest room. Upon the smooth rouge carpet was a richly daked canopy bed. The gold embroidery glittered like a my myriad of stars. There stood the man in a relaxed manner. If he were a human, he would be around 30 years old, but considering that he was of the demon race, one could not really be sure. At first glance, he looked skinny, but had a lean figure. In his hand was an old gilded book, into which seven differently colored sparkling gems were embedded. His visage, which wore a halo crown, even seemed to be amused by the sudden intrusion. Visitors, I presume. Would you like some tea? The sun will be up soon. So how about an early breakfast? No thanks. Raylene's hand quickly turned to the hilt of the sword. Ah, would you prefer some meat then? No. I see. Ah. The man held up his index finger as he seemed to come up with an idea. Milk? Who are you? He the Vainalina in a stubborn tone, with a sad shrug the man replied, I am Chaos. Nice to meet you, drug ridder girl. Chaos? I've heard of the name before. He was sent to the city by the military to pass on the teachings of the founding father, Stoikea. I heard that he was now a free loader at this temple. That's right. I'm indebted to this place. And what would your name be? Rady. This here is my proud dragon, Momoke. Pia, pia. Leaning over Raidalina's shoulder, the child dragon Momoke chiefly greeted him. How very polite of you. Chaos in exchange took a bow where all was opened, his mouth in a hurry. I'm Roa! Chaos' eyes stopped at the dirt-covered figure of Roa. His clothes were so close to the point of crumbling away that Raidalina had mistaken him for a zombie. In fact, when he was running away, it hadn't even crossed his mind that that area might have been exposed. Roro, my boy. You have quite unique fashion sense. I know that's what's popular with young people now, right? 
These spider lines will come quite knowledgeable on that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think it's very good. Apologizing to Chiri Chaos, who had his thumbs up roll us off replied, No, I'm dirty because I was buried in the ground, maybe for around 3,000 years or so. Of course I knew that. 3,000 years? As expected, he had not been paying attention. Chaos dark eyes with him. Yes, it would seem that 3,000 years have passed while I was sleeping. Even I find it hard to believe. Dragons that live for thousands of years eternally youthful in immortal ghosts. There are many species that live for long periods of time, with Byroids being eternally youthful. However, they are not immortal. I do not know of any that have lived for 3,000 years. Yes, I have no clue as to what happened to me either. Hmm. Chaos put his finger on his temple and pondered for a while, then let out a breath and smiled. Then let us see for ourselves. Time, time that is like a torrent. With that, the book in chaos had begun to float while emitting a pale ring of light, as he slid his fingers across the pages as if stroking them. The old pages began to roll past by themselves, coming to a stop of a certain point. Let the memories of the long past be reflected upon your eyes. In that moment, bands of coloured light overflowed from the book. They twisted and entwined, eventually forming an image of light in the air. It was a field of wheat with golden ears. The sight was so familiar to him that Rolla could not help let out a surprised voice. Indeed, this was the wheat feet and Olivia had travelled to. Unconsciously, he reached for the image, but in the blink of an eye, he had been transformed into lizard land. It was 3,000 years ago. An unremarkable place famous for its fleet and other crops was suddenly struck by a calamity. The cause was unknown, but the trees and plants turned to white ash and decayed away. It was thought to be hopeless, but then a world tree spouted there, growing to a great size in a flash. It healed the decaying land. That seems to be the reason why the city has flourished. This temple where we are was built to protect the world tree. What does this have to do with him? Not again radling this question. Chaos slid his finger further. The distant view of the lost world tree switched to show the roots of the tree. Looking carefully, you could see something that looked like a person with skin. No, brown and nodded like a tree. At first glance, it looked like a tree dryad. Surely he had been caught up with a disaster. At the root of the world tree slept a world turned byroid boy, and no matter what the people did, he could never be awoken. Eventually, the boy, exposed to the winds and the rain, was buried in the earth and disappeared, forgotten by the people. Closing the book, Chaos spied at Roa. That will be you, Roa. That's probably right. Welcome to the 3,000 years in the future. I'm glad to meet. I'm glad to meet such a witness to history. Ah, do you want a cookie? Are you hungry? No, I'm fine. I see. Chaos's handsome visage was clouded in disappointment. Suddenly he looked up. Ah, I know. I can't leave you covered in dirt. When Chaos snapped his fingers, a soft blue light enveloped Rolla's body. In no time at all, the dirt that had been stuck to his body had been cleansed and his caustic discomfort disappeared. Of course, his left arm had not recovered, and when he touched the cross section, it felt like a withered tree. Un, you look charming, but as expected, your clothes seem to have run away. Makami, are you there? Yes, over here. Suddenly a voice came from the dimness of the room, and man emerged as if he had been materialized. He was of the alien race, by human terms he would appear to be in his mid-twenties. He had white hair, and his tall, well-built body was wrapped in a white suit. The eyes behind his glasses were devoid of emotion, and together with his pale blue irises, they could be described as icy. Only the leather gloves around his hands which were disproportionately large to his body, had a dull black sheen. I want you to pair some clothes for him, naturally, something fashionable. As you wish, Master Chaos. 
The man called Makani bowed deeply and disappeared without a sound. Of course, since he was not a ghost, it would be more appropriate to say he left, but since there was so little sight of him, the role was it was as if he had vanished. Makani is my right hand man. He's a very good worker, taking care of my personal security, keeping my schedule, cleaning, doing the laundry, and he makes a delicious plum jam. Oh yeah. No thanks. Of his words being guessed and declined before he could say them, Chaos Head definitely drooped. It seemed that he really wanted to serve Rolla and really enough some tea. In all honest, they were not in the mood for some, nor did they have the time. Could I ask you a question? Go ahead. 3,000 years ago, I was travelling with an olive biroid named Olivi. Do you know what happened to him? Stay, for example, were there other biroids like me who were buried in the ground? My history record contains a multiple multitude of memories, but history is a large river and it cannot keep track of the small stream, sorry. I do not know who he is. I see. It had been 3,000 years. He was probably dead by now. But he couldn't let go of those feelings. He could never give up. After all, it felt like it was only yesterday that he and Livy were laughing together. Unable to hide his mixed feelings, and he looked down at his feet when he felt a big hand on his shoulder looking up. Rova saw Chaos with his hand on his shoulder, nodding vigorously. Don't give up. Maybe he too is buried in the ground, just like you. Maybe he'll wake up some wake up today, or even tomorrow. After all, we don't know why you fell asleep, or why you woke up. Now, do we? I'm sure that Master Sorkao would say never give up. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Even though he knew it was just said in consolation that kindness saves Rora, putting on an awkward smile, he returns his usual self. Okay, I understand young Rora's circumstances, but why are you here this hour, young lady? This is the World Tree, World Tree Temple, which I believe is a restricted area. Thinking that the conversation had been just between Chaos and Rora, Ridolina was caught off guard and her face stiffened. Um, before I knew it, I found myself here. You must be an active sleepwalker. Ah! She groaned as the very word that she had directed at Rolwa early now bounced back at her. It would seem that she was terrible at telling lies. Her confusion must have been transmitted to the dragon because Momoke was circling her shoulders whimpering. Holding up his index figure, Keo said, let me guess. The fire regalus, right? You know about it? Redalini energetically picked herself up and immediately covered her mouth with an Ah! Kios chuckled as she could not escape. Roa, who was watching the two talk, had no clue what they were talking about. Fire what? Fire regalus. It is said to be an immense power that brings prosperity and calamity. Of course, I've never actually seen it. So I don't know exactly what it is or what it looks like, but there seem to be many rumours about it. I heard that the fiery gallus was an immense power, can make anyone's wish come true, and that one of them was buried at the roots of the world tree. I see, that's why there's been so many guards out and about lately. I have no idea how such a rumour got out there. Chaos sighed. So young lady, so young lady snuck in late at night and dug up a big catch. Being young roller, I mean, you wouldn't normally think that a person would be buried here, now would you? And the ground was glowing. I thought this was it. Glowing? Rora responded reflexively. He could not overlook that. That's impossible. My senior lacks quality glow, but no Rowans. But it was glowing. He would only tilt his head to the side and readily stop his words. This was not negotiable part of the dinners. I was asleep. I didn't use any magic. You must have seen something wrong. It was a gleam, green flash. How could I have mistaken it? Then there were conversations. It was interrupted by the sounds of knocking. Everyone in the area turned to see Makani expressionlessly holding an emerald green cloth while knocking on the wall with his finger. 
Master Chaos, the clothes are ready. As expected of Mkani, fast to work. Now young Rowa, the night has ended. Get dressed and let's go into the town. It is my duty to lead the young. Well, this is when I go bye bye, goodbye. Chaos forcibly grabbed Renly's shoulder as she quickly tried to turn to leave. He, he smiled, wavering. Young Rady, despite how it seems I'm quite busy, I'm not sure if I can entertain a guest from 3,000 years ago. It'd be a relief to have some pointers from a girl. This is but another chance encounter. Don't you think that you should take care of young Roa? No! Guards! Guards! There's an intruder here! Ah! ah. Then we're set. With absolutely no intention of joining the conversation, Roa pretended to not hear them as he was getting dressed. When they stepped out of Chaos's guest room, the sky was already bright with the morning sun. They could see a flock of birds flying across the sky. There were multiple footsteps, and the guards who had been chasing Roa and Red Lena appeared from the other side of the corridor, one of them with eight bayonet lowered approaching them. Master Chaos, have you seen any intruders? What are these two? I don't think they were on the visitors list. Chaos let out an oops before the shared gaze of the guard. Um, that's right. Chaos held up his hands figure. They're my illegitimate children. Mm-hmm. Raydalina was so reluctant to the idea that she almost jumped at him, but Rora quickly covered her mouth and somehow prevented her from cursing. Puberty, they usually go, Shut up, old man. Ha, I see. Sorry for the inconvenience. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. As such, the three of them left the sacred area and went into the town. And that is the end of the second chapter. So I hope you guys did enjoy, and if you did, please make sure to leave a like, and while you're down there, why not subscribe and hit that notification bell so that when I upload another video, you'll be notified. Adels out. See ya.